I'm Gregory Jenks. I'm a principal at Sasaki Associates, and I'm very fortunate to lead the firm's uh, strategies group, where we really focus on bringing together uh, mission, money, and place in a holistic planning strategy. So we've been incredibly fortunate to partner with the University System of Georgia to help them really rethink how the system considers space across all uh, 31 institutions. It's about 70 campuses, 90 million square feet. And the findings were remarkable. I mean, you, you almost have to sort of see the data in front of you to believe it. Uh, I, I'm, I, I still have to pinch myself. It's, it's, it is amazing to see the spread across the scores within the institution. There's, there's essentially a linear distribution across just about any metric that you can name. Uh, for many of the metrics, there isn't a, uh, uh, a sensible explanation for where institutions fall across that spectrum. For example, it simply isn't true that the research universities are all on uh, one end of the spectrum and the state colleges on the other. Quite the opposite. Uh, institutions tend to be interspersed without necessarily having a direct connection uh, to their primary mission. And we've conducted similar experiments with the, the space databases that we have. We have uh, roughly 110, 120 institutions in our space database here at Sasaki, and we've sort of seen similar patterns. And what this really means for us, I think beyond anything, is that a formula-based approach to thinking about university space is probably not the most helpful approach. There uh, simply isn't uh, the data out there to support the fact that you can compute and determine space needs in that way. Uh, because, and this is something that's always sort of struck us, that model is essentially an additive model. Almost any time we've run the formula, and sure, we know how to run the formula just like anybody else, um, you end up seeing that there is more space need than the institution has, and yet somehow everybody manages to get up and put their shoes on and, and go to the office in the morning and, and somehow you know teach the students, the students tend to learn. Um, so many things have changed since those formulae were derived that in, in some sense we've outgrown them. So th there, there's much that's of value there, but the question is how can we identify best what's changed? So there's an, an inherent bias within the existing system to sort of think about libraries as one thing and student unions as a completely separate thing. Of course, that in no way mirrors our practice on most campuses today where, you know, libraries have more Starbucks and fewer books. I still love books, uh, but that's just not the way that the world is, is moving. You see institutions that sort of manage just about okay with, say, four assignable square feet per student FTE of classroom space. To, and you see institutions on the other end of the spectrum with 20, 25 assignable square feet. And what this, what this leads us to believe is that many of the decisions about facilities that have previously been thought of as sort of physical choices are actually policy choices. How much space you need in, in large part depends on how you choose to use that space. And of course, that links back to the culture of the organization uh, and, uh, and how folks want to work, when they want to work, when students are able to be on campus. Th those, those are all factors. But what we're trying to highlight uh, uh, a lot is that we must make those choices consciously. The, the, the choke point for student throughput is, is actually, at least in the data that, that we've seen, much more often related to specialized instructional spaces, i.e. teaching labs, which are much harder to virtualize. Uh, some folks are doing some interesting things in that regard, um, but you know, I'm, I, I still believe in Bunsen burners to a large extent in that world. And of course, the, huge, the biggest culprit, the worst culprit is, is office space. You know, you're talking uh, 20 to 25% of the space uh, on, on college and university campuses are dedicated to that need in an archaic model that corporate America has certainly long since abandoned, and uh, which to me is the real most pressing question and the one that is the third rail of university space planning, because we're simply not allowed to discuss uh, the sanctity of the faculty office. Now, at this point, I need to say my mother is a university professor. I'm not necessarily trying to take away my mother's office. If we're serious about more efficient university space planning, we simply can't afford to dodge this question. Obviously, universities have needs, have needs sometimes for new space, have, particularly in the Georgia context, uh, tremendous needs for maintaining, renovating, reusing, better using uh, existing space. And what this frees us up to do is to think about this much more as a kind of capital prioritization exercise than it does anything else. 
how do we begin to choose between the many needs that we have and relate those to our kind of strategic mission requirements? 